dear friends, as you know, over the years, I've supported the idea of uh, consciousness uh, driven mm -hmm. evolution. And I've been chastised for that, vilified for that, attacked for that by luminaries, including evolutionary biologists such as Rick, Richard Dawkins and many others. So here is an update on why uh, consciousness driven evolution makes sense. Before I even go there, I should mention that this is the Vedantic point of view and the non-dual perspective, which says everything that we call um, reality is a modified form of awareness or consciousness. So in that context, even genes are a symbolic representation of modes of knowing, of knowing and awareness. And so also everything I say, you know, about nutrition and micronutrients, they're all symbolic representations of consciousness. But the symbolic representation makes it easier to reify an abstract idea, which is the reality. The idea is the reality. Symbolic representation is the reification. Reification means to make concrete sounds reductionist, but it's very helpful. As long as we remember the fundamental idea that you and the universe are awareness. So, you know, we share about 99% uh, of our uh, genes with primates and we share DNA and genes with other species, including primates and extinct hominids. And the difference which truly defines us from all other species is huge. I mean, there's no species that even engages in this discussion that asks questions about the meaning of existence or explanation for life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or has the advanced uh, cognitive abilities uh, that we have compared to other species, our brains are relatively large to our body. This allows for greater processing power, enabling complex thought, planning, problem solving. Um, we also have a highly developed prefrontal cortex, which is crucial to represent, crucial for, rep, for representing abstract uh, reasoning, self-awareness, executive function. I don't believe that the brain does anything other than transmits awareness. But nevertheless, looking at the brain helps us understand um, how awareness localizes itself in different aspects in the brain, in the genes, etc. So we also have a complex language. Humans possess a unique ability to, com to use complex symbolic language facilitating communication and knowledge and sharing, which is crucial for cultural development. And so also as humans, we have physical adaptations, bipedalism, freeing hands for tool use and manipulation, opposable thumbs, enabling intricate tool and object control and reduce jaw and teeth size which suggests a shift towards cooking food consumption and impacting nutrition and brain development. And of course, there's cultural transmission, cumulative cultural evolution. And unlike genetic evolution, cultural evolution and transmission allows for rapid learning and ad adaptation through sharing knowledge and skills across generations. Then also we have technology and tool use. We go beyond instinctual tool use with complex inventions, adaptations across various domains. We have symbolic representation um, um, of experience. So humans use symbols, art, music, science, symbolic representation um, and to express complex ideas, emotions. And this of course fosters other uh, other uh, aspects to our behavior. Uh, we are highly social. 
we form diverse and complex social structures with cooperation, empathy, altruism, all these play significant rules, rules in our evolution. And then, of course, there's moral reasoning, ability to make moral judgments and develop ethical frameworks impacting behavior and social interactions. We have self-awareness. We possess a unique understanding of ourselves as individuals capable of introspection and reflection. So this is quite a big difference with 1% of difference between primates and us, between chimpanzees and us. So is this a result of epigenetics? Is cultural transmission a result of epigenetics, which is, says that environment and behavior, uh, choices and, uh, and everything, lifestyle and emotions affect gene activity? And so is there a connection between cultural transmission and epigenetics? Uh, so epigenetics, as I've said previously, refers to a change in gene expression, but it doesn't alter the underlying DNA sequence, but it can be passed on to offspring. And this raises the question, can cultural experience leave their mark or cultural experiences leave their mark on our genes shaping future generations. That kind of research is not being developed, but we do know that intergenerational trauma has effects on future generations. Research in animals indicates that environmental stressors experienced by parents can influence the epigenetic markings in their sperm or eggs, potentially affecting the offspring's susceptibility to stress or anxiety. And this could explain the impact of historical traumas, famines, wars, all this happening right now in the world. And these might echo and be transmitted across generations. Also cultural tradition studies exploring cultural practices like diet, social behavior suggest that uh, there are epigenetic changes and marks that influence future generation. So is it likely that this is all consciousness modifying itself as modes of knowing and experience and affecting gene activity and playing a huge role, a huge role um, in evolution. That random mutations and natural selection as described by Darwin is a very incomplete explanation of the evolution of species. Uh, particularly when you look at the leap from primates to humans, it's definitely seems beyond genes. While sharing 99% of our DNA with chimpanzees, the 1% difference holds immense significance. This includes genes related to brain development, languages, and social behavior and social networks. And of course, there are other factors, changes in gene regulation beyond gene sequences, genes are turned on and off, and this plays a crucial role. Uh, regulatory changes in humans might have led to different brain functions and behaviors compared to primates. And then environmental pressures, selection pressures like bipedalism, tool use, changing diets, may have driven specific genetic adaptations favoring traits like larger brains and complex social interactions. I've already mentioned cultural evolution. So once we really understand the symbolic representation of consciousness as gene activity, as brain activity, as biological activity, uh, then I think we'll be ready to conclude that uh, consciousness um, drives evolution and the mechanics and mechanisms are becoming clear and uh, once again mechanisms genes epigenetics brain activity are not the cause the cause is modes of knowing and experience in consciousness and evolution of consciousness that is represented symbolically as genetic genetic activity gene transmission, brain development, 
and ultimately change in biological structure. I hope this makes sense. Of course, the strict Darwinian um, reductionists will not like this explanation, but the evidence is pointing very clearly that they are frozen in an outmoded model of reality. And that's all we have, models of reality. Reality is ultimately inexplicable because consciousness is inconceivable and, uh, and cannot be, uh, not only cannot be conceptualized, it can't be mathematically mapped, only its uh, activities can be mathematically mapped. So let me know your thoughts. Do you agree, disagree? And if you disagree, why do you disagree? And if you agree, why do you agree? So thanks for listening.